Well, hello, ceramic students. We are coming up on week four, and your assignment this week is to create an assemblage that is inspired by the work of Luis Nevelson. So Luis Nevelson was an American sculptor. She was born in Russia in September of 1899 and lived to be 88 years old. There she is, a very hip looking New York artist. She is known for creating these large constructions out of mostly wood of things that were left behind by other people. Um, so that's referred to sometimes as found objects. Sometimes sculptors don't create everything themselves. They take things that already exist and then put it into a new format that gives it new life. Um, you can see her maiden name there and that she married and she studied in New York. Um, and you can see one of these constructions that she's created out of scraps of wood that she might have found at a junkyard or at uh, um, a construction site. And you can see also that she's painted them all the same color to help unify the piece. That's something that you might think about. Sometimes it'll be easier to paint things before you put them together. And sometimes it might be easier to paint them afterwards, like with a can of spray paint or something like that. But the repetition and the rhythms and the patterns that she creates within these box forms um, can be really exciting visually, even though they don't seem to have like a distinct meaning. Just looking at them, the light and shadow can be really sort of exciting. The kind of work that she's making and that you'll be making is what we call an assemblage. And as I mentioned before, it's like a 3D collage. She found things and put them together. Sometimes she might have cut them to make them fit um, together. But for the most part, these were things that were discarded. Um, you can use a board to back your piece, um, or you can use other objects. I've got a slide coming up on that. I'm going to give you some wooden scraps that um, you can take home and play around with. I'm going to give you some wood glue. But that doesn't need to be the end of your materials for this project. You could look around the yard, the house, or I don't know, any place that you can find some sort of inspiration and see if there are things that you might use to tie things together visually or physically. Um, think about what kind of substrate you want to build this on. It could be freestanding, but it might be easier to take home a board or look and see if you've got an old box lying around somewhere, those clementine boxes that the fruit comes in, that kind of fruit could be a good substrate for you. Um, or even a book, you know, an old book could be something that you open up and start cutting into and gluing things on, and that could even give it a little bit of meaning. Repetition is a good idea. Um, it helps bring things together. All the pieces in this piece um, have some kind of curve or straight edge. So she's playing with the curves versus the straight edges here. But uh, uh, how, whenever you have something repeat over and over and over, it makes everything feel like it belongs together because they all share some common trait. Contrast can also be something that's really interesting. These are stone pieces that have been assembled into this small box format by an artist that I found on Pinterest. And this piece also has repetition, but notice those little spots of red and the different kinds of textures. We've got those little pieces that feel like, look like if you were to touch them would be kind of rough and then the smoother edges there. But they're also playing with directions here, which is kind of exciting. Um, and it got some limited spots of bright, intense color. You might also think about a narrative. You know, you could develop a story in your piece. You don't have to just use what I give you in class. So you can see this is a piece by Joseph Cornell, who I love and did assemblage pieces in boxes, kind of like Nevelson. But his pieces almost always seem to like have some kind of narrative, some sort of story behind them. I got a million words in this bottle, these leaves. What kind of tree did that come from? He's done writing on the walls and included a little photograph here. 
So depending on how inspired you get, you might tell a story with your piece. You might just make something that looks cool, that has contrast, that has repetition. Uh, so I'm excited for you guys to see what you can come up with. So we'll distribute the materials in class and uh, maybe brainstorm a little bit. I think you guys should take a look at some work by Joseph Cornell or Louisa Nevelson and maybe just look at uh, uh, a Google search about assemblage or 2D sculpture um, and see what you come up with. So at this point, I'm going